Welcome to an audio-only podcast for Crafty Stacks. My name is N Water Cooler. If you're just listening for the first time, I just want to mention this is an audio-only podcast, but I've got lots of videos with visuals on the Crafty Stacks channel, so I encourage you to check those out. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the pros and the cons of selling digital designs. Now, I have a video on the Crafty Stacks channel. It's actually my most popular video, and it's about selling digital designs. So I wanted to do a deep dive on it because it's obviously, because it's one of my most popular videos, it's one of my most often commented and questioned on videos. So I've made a list of things that I think are going to be helpful if you're thinking about selling digital designs, if you are selling digital designs, and it's really going to be the pros and the cons of why you would sell digital designs, and then also how to go about selling digital designs, specifically what software you should use, where you should source your designs, and then really importantly, where you should sell your designs. So the purpose of this podcast is that it's going to be a long one and I didn't want to spend months and months trying to edit together some hugely smart, quick cut video. Uh, To be honest, I just don't have the time. And so what I thought I would do instead is just throw all this down in an audio format. And then that way, hey, if you're out for a drive, if you're out for a walk, if you're washing the cat, if you're just laying in the bathtub, whatever you're doing, you don't need to actually watch this quote unquote video because there's no graphics. It's just going to be that logo for the entire time. So you can kind of turn off that part of your brain. And if you want to make notes or, you know, if you're making dinner or something, this could be a helpful way to take in some information. Okay, let's jump right in. The biggest pros of selling digital designs. Let's start there. One of the biggest pros is that you're not really dealing with any inventory. So if you're creating digital designs, and what I mean by digital designs are SVG files, which are vectors, PNG files, which are graphic design files, like pictures with a transparent background. That's the really the benefit of having a PNG file. And the other one is a JPEG file. That's just a regular picture. So like when you take a photograph on a camera and it's a digital camera, a JPEG is a pretty standard image file. There's also a couple other ones. There's one called a DXF file, and that's like a cutting file. So if you've got a digital cutting machine, and you can Google this, by the way, if you've never heard of these terms before, but like a digital cutting machine would be like a machine that you have in your workshop, and it cuts metal or wood or any sort of fabric or leather. It's a really cool device, and you can create really intricate design. So a DXF file would be what the you know the software that this system would use when it creates whatever physical object it's creating. There's another file as well called an EPS file, and that's like a Photoshop version of a vector because Photoshop doesn't really deal with vectors, so an EPS file is another type as well. Now, you don't have to sell all of these. There's lots of people that just sell SVG files. There's lots of people that just sell SVG files and maybe a PNG file, and that's it. I typically will bundle the different file types together and then sell them as a bundle, purely for convenience, so that if somebody's buying a package of files, I don't really care which one they're using. The core elements of the file are going to be the same. It'll be you know, a funny penguin eating an ice cream cone, and it's a picture of the penguin, and then it's a vector of the penguin, and it's a cutting file of the penguin. You get the idea. So one of the biggest pros for selling digital designs is that there's no inventory. And what I mean by no inventory is that there's no physical inventory. I'm old enough that I remember selling t-shirts at flea markets, selling comic books out of my basement, and there's a lot of inventory involved when you're moving physical goods. I currently flip action figures on eBay, I do still sell comic books, and I do still sell physical t-shirts, so I have some inventory at my house, but it has a way of just breeding and growing, and the next thing you know, your one room you were going to dedicate to this is creeping up into the upstairs bathroom and you're like, oh, yo, yo, why do I have so much stuff in my house? So one of the things I love about selling digital is I have a hard drive. I have an external hard drive and it's like 120 gigabytes or something. I think I bought it for well under $100 and I just store all of my digital designs on that. So when I'm working away on my computer, I'm creating digital designs, I'm putting them into folders, I'm listing those folders for sale, I'm just zip driving them and I'm listing them for sale, and then I'm moving them onto my external hard drive, which then literally just sits on a shelf. And so I've got 
thousands of digital designs. So should my computer ever die? Should the server that I'm ever using to sell the digital designs ever go down? I have a backup of all of these things. So you do have an inventory. You do have inventory, but it's not physical inventory the same way that you would if you're selling t-shirts, for example. Another huge advantage of selling digital designs is that there's no shipping. And this is massive because it represents a huge savings for the client, both in time and expense. You know, when you buy something and you wait for it in the mail, we're getting so impatient now, even with Amazon, if you order something and it's only one day shipping, you spend that entire day peeking out the window for the mailman to show up. And it's like, man, are we ever impatient? So imagine purchasing something on Etsy and waiting two weeks, three weeks, six weeks to get your item printed and shipped. Well, that all goes away when you buy a digital download on Etsy. Just as an example, you could buy it from a person's website. You could buy it from other avenues as well. And we'll talk about those avenues here a little bit later on. But when you buy a digital design, you basically can download it right away. So within minutes, you're now the owner of a copy of that digital design and you can use it to create your t-shirt, your coffee mug, your greeting card for your nephew, whatever it is. So I often think of selling digital designs like being an author with a library of books, right? Imagine that you've written 20 novels or 40 novels, and now they're just sitting there online, and somebody at some point in time anywhere around the world can purchase that digital download. So instead of making books, which by the way, if you want to make books, that's great. But if you want to make digital designs like t-shirt designs or SVG vector files, it's the exact same principle. You're authoring a design and then you're listing it for sale and it could sit there for days, weeks, or even years. And it doesn't really cost you the same way that inventory products cost you. So those are the huge benefits of selling digital. And I think these are intuitive, right? There's a reason that you found your way to this podcast. And it's because you're thinking of selling digital or maybe you're just beginning to sell digital. Well, there's some cons as well. I don't want to rain on anyone's party here, but I want to show you the complete picture of selling digital. And the biggest con that I can come up with, the one that I, at least it's the biggest con for me, is that it's a very, very highly competitive marketplace. So when you go on to Etsy and you type in funny SVG, for example, or cat SVG, or birthday SVG, you're going to get just mountains of results coming back. And we're talking tens of thousands of results, sometimes hundreds of thousands of results. And that can be a little bit demoralizing. It can actually be a lot demoralizing to the point where you say, screw this, I'm going to go off and go ride a bike and forget about selling digital designs. So I can totally appreciate the frustration on that. The other con is that the prices are often very low. And it's a result of the same idea, which is that the marketplace is highly competitive. So you wind up looking on Etsy and I've had this happen too, where people reach out to me and they say, is this actually the price? What's the downside? because you're offering a massive bundle of 100 designs for like $2.99. And they're thinking, is this all garbage? Is this all pirated? Is this all illegal? Well, no, it's just that the marketplace has become so competitive with the advent of high-end software that anybody can use, and the price point of buying the software is either free or very low, that really anybody can become a graphic designer, at least to the extent that you can sell a simple SVG file online. So marketplaces like Etsy and free programs like Inkscape have made it virtually impossible to have a barrier to entry so that you've got everybody under the sun selling digital designs. So as a result, we've got massive amounts of listings. And as a result of that, we have really, really low prices. I've seen things like literally a thousand t-shirt designs being sold for 99 cents. Now, I think the quality wasn't great, but, you know, it's really hard to compete with stuff like that because the average consumer is not necessarily going to know or care about quality. They're just going to see, wow, I got a whole bunch of designs for 35 cents each or 3.5 cents each or one cent each. And they're just going to get the greedy eyes and they're going to download the bundle, right? So it is a really competitive marketplace. Now, I don't necessarily have a workaround for this. There's a ton of competition and the prices are very low. However, it's been my experience that you can still make 
consistent passive income selling digital designs. And it really comes down to a digital farming technique. So I'll talk about that technique here really quickly. So you can imagine a farmer, right? I live in Canada and Canada has got tons and tons of farmland. So if I drive from like my hometown to another town, I'm just driving past hours and hours of farmland. So for me, I think of selling digital designs as having a digital farm. And what I mean by that is if you had a farm, you'd want to think about, well, how much stuff can I grow on this farm? And what are the limitations to growing on this farm? So if you're selling, you know, cows and chickens or carrots and peas, well, there's only a fixed amount that you can sell. There's a finite amount that you can sell because the farm is only so big. It's only 100 acres, 1,000 acres. However big the farm is, it's not an infinitely large farm. However, in the digital world, that's actually true. You really actually have an infinitely large homestead that you can then farm out. The only real limitations is your time. And then there's a capital investment. You need to have a computer. You need to have some sort of software. But other than that, it really just comes down to time and effort. So there's nothing stopping you technically from uploading 1,000 bundles, 10,000 bundles, 10 million bundles. Now, I know that's an absurd number as I say that, but my point is there are sellers on Etsy or Creative Fabric or these other marketplaces that have 10,000 listings or 9,000 listings or even 3,000 listings. That's a lot of listings. So my point is... If you're uploading, say, 3,000 designs onto a platform, chances are, even with the low margins and even with the high competition, you're going to be making some sort of sales. And if that's the case, it becomes passive income in a sense. Now, there really is no passive income. So I'm here to burst the big bubble about passive income. I get this question all the time either on YouTube or on Facebook or through email, people email me and they say, hey, I don't have any graphic design skills and I don't own a computer and I don't have any time to devote to this because I have 18 children. So can you please tell me how I can make $1,000 a month just by uploading one or two designs? And it's like, well, don't you think if I knew that, I would just do that myself? Or if anybody knew that, they would just do that themselves? Why would I tell you how to upload two rinky-dink designs and make $1,000 US a month. Wouldn't I just make those designs? So again, I'm not trying to sound like I'm the world's biggest creep, but it just seems like an unrealistic ask. And I do get this like a lot. This is not like I get one email a year about this. I get this all the time. So I want to be clear about the expectations here. If you're going to sell digital designs, it is more passive Then if you're standing at a lemonade stand for 18 hours a day for seven days a week, you know, selling hot dogs in New York, for example, okay, you got to be there, you got to have the cart, you got to sell the hot dogs, you got to sell the lemonade, you got to be there. With a digital download business, you don't really need to be there. The internet's always on. If you wake up at three in the morning and you turn on your computer, the internet's going to be there. It's not going anywhere. So that's one of the biggest advantages of selling digital is your designs are always available for sale and people can just click on it, pay you and download the design. And in that sense, it's passive. There's another con though that I wanted to bring up, especially if you're selling on a platform like Etsy or if you're selling on your own website and it's a pretty big con, although it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker. But it's a big con, and it's that people are going to ask you lots of questions about the files. You're going to get a lot of what I call tire kickers. So if you've ever bought a car, back in the old days, they used to go over, customers used to go over and, like, kick the tires. And this is just an expression that says, I'm not really going to buy anything. I'm just out kicking tires. And so you're going to get a lot of tire kickers when it comes to buying digital downloads. The reason for this is because people aren't necessarily tech savvy. And I I have to admit, I'm, I'm one of them. So I'm certainly not looking down my nose at the general population and calling them all a bunch of dummies. What I'm saying is we're all experts in something, but we're also not experts in much more things. So as a result, you may get questions from people that are housewives in the Midwest, or you may get a student in Europe and they don't necessarily know exactly how the files work. 
So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, it's not a judgment on them, but just be aware this could be a pretty large time suck in your business that you may not have accounted for. And that's my point. You may think, okay, I'm going to work an hour a night on digital designs. Well, some of that time may be responding to questions for people that are never going to purchase your designs. Another problem you may run into that's sort of related to it is somebody downloads your bundle and then they either have a question or a complaint about it after the sale. So a common question that I get is, hey, I've just bought your design. How do I download it? And one of the biggest problems is that the questions are often so vague, you then have to fire back clarifying questions and this becomes a time suck. So for example, this is a really sad example, but it's true, it happens all the time. Hi, I just bought your download. How do I download it? Okay, well, what computer are you using? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, if you're using a Windows computer, you're going to do this, this, and this. If you're using an Apple computer, you're going to do this, this, and this. Then they respond. It's not working. Okay, well, I'm not IT. Like, I, I don't work in information technology, and I can't drive over to your house if you live in Belgium. I'm in Canada. That's a really long swim. So I'm not going to get there to come to your house and help you download this design for 99 cents. So it's one of those things where sometimes you either just put up with a negative review here and there, or you refund the person's m money. It could be a dollar. And you just say, please go away, you know, nicely. But you may just want to keep their money and say, too bad, so sad. I don't know. It's up to you, obviously, from a customer service perspective. If somebody's buying a large bundle from me, I do make every effort to try to help them. I like to think I'm a nice guy and I actually want people to use the products and come back and buy more. Oh, spoiler alert, I'm actually pretty selfish and I'd like people to spend more money with me. So that's what I'm trying to do. But just be aware it is a bit of a time suck as well. Okay, so let's talk about how to make your digital downloads. And there's really three options that I'll just mention here very briefly. You, you need some sort of technology to create a digital download. I think that using your phone in general, as great as phones are, we're not there yet where you're going to be able to just press a button and instantly create a digital download worthy of sale. And this makes sense, right? Because if we think this through logically, if such a program existed, then don't you think people would just download that? Why would they be coming to you to buy the download? So I really think that this speaks to one of the major pitfalls when people are thinking of starting up a business. The main reason that you're starting up a business is to provide value for the client. So when you walk around the mall, for example, or if you go for a drive and you're passing by stores, just put some thought to it. What value are these stores providing? Take a grocery store, for example. If you go into a grocery store and you purchase your vegetables and your bread and your meat, well, you're, the, the store is providing a value in that you're not going out now and farming this stuff yourself. You're not growing your own peas and carrots. You're not killing your own chickens. Like that's a lot of work if you've got a full-time job, right? I'm not really interested in strangling a chicken on a Saturday. I already work a full-time job, right? I'd much rather go to the store and purchase my steak and purchase my rice instead of me like having rice patties in the backyard, right? So it's a value that the store is providing. It's pretty remarkable to think you can buy like bananas in Canada for like a dollar. Like that's amazing to me. A bundle of bananas is a buck considering you cannot grow bananas in Canada. So it's a huge value add that grocery stores provide regular people like me because I'm not flying to Costa Rica anytime soon to go stuff my suitcase full of bananas. So knowing that that's true, that businesses are providing value, you want to ask yourself, what value are you providing as a digital download provider, as a digital download artist? So typically you want to use technology to make a great looking design that the average person doesn't want to make or can't make. So that's really the two reasons that somebody spends money in life. Either they don't want to do it or they can't do it. That's it. It's got to be one of those two reasons. So if somebody's buying a digital design from you, either it's cheaper from a time perspective or a money perspective to buy it from you, or they don't know how to make it themselves. And this is very common. I find this in print on demand as well, but especially with digital downloads, people are trying to make stuff themselves 
and they know how to you know, maybe use a Cricut machine, which is like a digital cutting machine, but they don't know how to create the file themselves, the SVG file, which is great. That's where you step in and you make a sale. You've provided some value for that customer. So there's really three pieces of software I think the, it's worth looking at to see if you'd like to use those. The first one is Inkscape. I highly recommend Inkscape. The biggest positive for Inkscape is that it's free. You can go to inkscape.org, you can download the program, and you can try it out completely for free. The newest version that's come out at the time of this recording allows end users in both the Windows environment and Apple too. So I know in the past, if you were using an Apple product, you kind of zoned out when I talked about Inkscape because you're like, well, I can't really download it onto a Mac. Well, now you can. Inkscape exists for Apple users too. It's completely free. You can download it. There's no ads or anything on it. It's just a nice free program. It's wonderful. I use it all the time and there's lots of Crafty Stacks tutorials on the Crafty Stacks channel as well, specifically for Inkscape. Now there is a downside. It does take time to learn and there's lots and lots of features in Inkscape and it is a vector program, so that means there are some inherent limitations as well. It doesn't work the same as Photoshop, for example. So you'd have to learn specifically how to use Inkscape. There's another type of program you could try, and it's called Adobe Illustrator. Adobe is a huge suite of programs. So there's Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, all sorts of Adobe products. Well, Adobe is a premier software. So if you're using Adobe, like Photoshop or Illustrator, you are getting great value. It's a world-class, tried and tested software solution. It does cost money though, and Adobe has moved to a subscription service, which means if you buy a new copy of Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop, you're, you're paying per month, which really is not good from a cost perspective, especially if you're just starting up a new digital design business. You don't want to be in the whole $20 a month, $30 a month hosting this software solution. But if you've already got an established business or if you already own an Adobe Illustrator, I would highly recommend learning how to use it. And it's not super complicated. I mean, it's designed for a regular user. It's not designed for only industrial applications. Another option as well is a program called Affinity Designer. And Affinity is a software suite that competes with Adobe. So Affinity has really two main programs. There's a dig digital program here called Affinity Designer. And then there's also Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo is the equivalent of Adobe Photoshop. It's a, comp it's a competitor. And Affinity Designer is the competitor for Adobe Illustrator. So when we're talking about digital downloads, Affinity Designer is a vector program that you can use. Affinity Designer is pretty good and it's the biggest positive to it is that you only pay once to use the Affinity products. So I bought Affinity Photo and I bought Affinity Designer. I bought it on sale. It was like $30 US kind of thing for the whole thing uh, each. So I think for $60 US, I bought them both when they were on sale. It's a one-time payment and I don't ever have to pay a subscription ever. I just own it outright. The biggest downside to Affinity Designer is that Affinity Designer does not have a trace bitmap feature, which Inkscape does have. So if you're looking for an automated program to create SVG files, Inkscape is your best bet, I think, because Inkscape is free and it has the trace bitmap feature. There's really no downside to at least learning how to use it on a fundamental level. Affinity Designer is great. There's tons of features. It's amazing. But there is no automated trace bitmap feature at the time of this recording. Obviously, I'm hoping that changes someday because I love Affinity Designer but not necessarily to create SVGs from scratch. Okay, let's talk next about sourcing your designs, or in other words, creating your designs from scratch. How do you actually create a digital design? Well, you've got a, three different options the way I look at it, and there may be more, but I'm gonna talk about three in this little podcast here. The first option is to sit down at a desk with a felt tip pen or a pencil or some sort of drawing device and actually draw your own little doodle. So an example of this would be drawing a panda bear and then that becomes your digital download. It's a simple way to create your own artwork and it's impossible really to rip off anyone else because you're drawing it yourself. So there's really two ways you can do this drawing your own designs strategy. The first one is to sit down with an actual physical pencil or pen and draw it on a piece of paper 
and then scan the paper or take a photograph of the paper and then trace the bitmap using Inkscape. So you've drawn, hand-drawn a design and then you've translated it into a digital download that you can then touch up using Inkscape and you can sell it as an SVG, a PNG, JPEG, DXF, EPS file, that sort of thing. The other thing that you can do as well is you can draw your own images, but you can use something like what they call a stylus, which is a digital pencil, really. And then you can draw it right on your iPad. And there's lots of videos about using a digital stylus. I've got one on Crafty Stacks as well. It's called Apple Pencil Review. And really what you're doing is you're drawing right into a digital medium, and then you can download that, or you can create something in Inkscape using that digital design instead of scanning it. Another thing you can do is you can use public domain images as well. So I'm a big fan of this. I like looking through old magazines and old comic books and finding interesting images and then using the power of Inkscape, creating digital designs to then sell on a website like Etsy or my own website or something like that. And I'm going to talk about where to sell your digital designs here in just a moment. So I think using public domain designs for me is one of the easiest way to create digital downloads, really because I'm not drawing it myself. So it's way quicker to find a page of high quality, professionally done graphics, but they're so old that they've fallen into the public domain. And then number two, I'm pretty good with Inkscape, so I can just use Inkscape then to create digital designs from those public domain images. And then the third method is really a hybrid of those two. So you could take a public domain image or a group of public domain images and you could splice together some sort of original artwork. So an example of this would be creating a really large welcome sign for the house that has a lot of flowers and trim around the edges and a lot of different text and maybe there's some graphics inside. And it's a combination of you typing, grabbing public domain vectors, and then splicing this all in, you know, grouping this all into a one big large download that then somebody could use to create fine art prints at their own house to create a welcome sign for guests that come into the house. So this is very common, right? You could take 10 or 20 different elements and you could create your own original artwork from that. Okay, let's talk about where to sell your designs. I think there's really three main options. And you could try all three and you can see which ones work. However, I'd start with, my first recommendation is Etsy. And as much as I hate Etsy, I have this love-hate relationship with Etsy. Etsy really for selling digital designs is a great option, especially if you're first starting out. Now I wanna be clear about the downsides first. If you're selling on Etsy, it does cost money to list on Etsy. So I would recommend not investing a ton of time or money on Etsy, but rather try it out. So maybe get up to 100 listings, 100 listings at like 30 cents a listing. I mean, Canada, it might be slightly different in whatever country you're from. Let's say 20 US per listing. Then that's like 20 US dollars per month to list 100 digital downloads on Etsy. So that means you have to make $20 a month, $20 in sales just to break even every month. So it's not just free upload everything you want all the time. So Etsy though has a huge upside. And the huge upside is that they're the world's biggest marketplace for selling digital designs, I think. At least one, if you can find a larger one, please let me know. I've never found a larger digital design platform than Etsy. And when you search just on Google, if you type in funny cat SVG and you just search, you're gonna see a bunch of results that come up with Etsy. So Etsy has really good what they call SEO. SEO, the three initials, stands for Search Engine Optimization. So I would highly recommend going onto Google and typing in a few search results. New York SVG, Funny Birthday Vector, Mother's Day Digital Downloads. These are search terms. Search for them on Google and see what comes up. So a common question I get from people is they'll find some little platform where they want to list their digital designs for sale. And they'll say, hey, Zen, what do you think about this digital design platform? It's called blah, blah, blah.com. And they offer free listings for digital designs. Well, to be honest, I'm not interested. And when I tell them why, it kind of makes sense, although it kind of breaks their heart a little bit. I can't find them on Google. So if I can't find them on Google, 
No one's going to find them on Google. They're never going to make any sales. It would be like you listing a bunch of t-shirts in your basement and not advertising for it. And then saying, well, I don't understand. I've got this great inventory down here. Yeah, but nobody knows you have a basement full of t-shirts. So I don't want to underplay the importance of SEO. SEO, search engine optimization, is the single greatest barrier to success that you will have selling digital designs, in my opinion. If they can't find you, they can't give you money. So Etsy has overcome that. They have massive SEO. And if you search for any search term, if you search for any product, you're going to see Etsy results come up. Now, another option you can use is your own website. You could sell digital designs on your own website. And if you do this, again, the biggest downside is going to be you need to know a little bit about SEO. It would be the crime of the century if you paid for a domain name, if you then bought a high-end computer, if you uploaded a ton of designs onto your own website, then you use an app like Shopify. So now you're into the tune of $40 a month, $50 a month, and you make no sales. Zero. Not only have you invested all this time, but you've invested some money as well. And that's not a good thing if you're not getting a return on your investment. Now look, any new business is going to take time to get going. I'm not suggesting you're going to upload a ton of designs on your very first day and all of a sudden you've paid off your mortgage. But what I am suggesting is if you're not making any sales at all and it's because you're not in anybody's search results, that's a problem because you're going to need to figure out a way to get those designs in front of people's eyeballs so that they can buy them. So I would recommend even if you have your own website and even if you're selling on your own website, you'd want to have some sort of an Etsy presence, a little tiny rinky dinky store with maybe 30 digital downloads. And that way, at least it drives traffic to your website. So this is very common. If you go onto Etsy and you look up people selling digital designs, you're going to see, hey, also check out my shop at, you know, sunnybecky.com. I'm totally making this up. And then, you know, and then you go to that website and all of a sudden you've got a bunch of digital downloads there. And if Sunny Becky really does exist, wonderful, but I don't think she does. Okay. So the third option is selling on a third party website, but it's not Etsy. And there's a site that I'm a huge ambassador for. I really love using them. It's called Creative Fabrica. And there's other competitors out there as well. Another one is called Creative Market. I don't use Creative Market very much, so I can't comment on it to any great extent, but I can talk at length until your ears bleed about Creative Fabrica. And I love Creative Fabrica and I use them a lot. So I actually sell on Creative Fabrica. So I've got a little digital store that I've opened on Creative Fabrica and then I upload digital downloads. And these are zip files that contain SVG files, PNG files, EPS files, and so on and so on. Now it's free to list on Creative Fabrica. That's the biggest upside. All you have to do is apply and if Creative Fabrica accepts you, it's free to list on their website. And Creative Fabrica has a ton of designs available, which means there's also a ton of subscribers. There's a ton of people buying designs. They have a freebie section. I highly encourage you to check out Creative Fabrica. Now, when I say it's free to list on Creative Fabrica, people don't believe me. And I get comments all the time from people saying, what's the catch? Well, there is no catch. It's free to list on Creative Fabrica. In fact, Creative Fabrica actually pays you to list on Creative Fabrica. That's right. Do not adjust your headphones. I am saying that Creative Fabrica pays you to list. Now, how does that work? Well, what they do is Creative Fabrica takes all of the subscription revenue because they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers every month that pay a fee and then they can use any design on the website at any time. So they take that subscription revenue and they add it all up and then they take a cut for themselves and then they divide the remainder amongst all the artists based on the number of listings you have. doesn't matter if you sell anything. It just matters how many listings you have. So if you have a thousand listings on Creative Fabrica and you make zero sales, you'll still get paid something because you have 1,000 uploads sitting there, which is part of the pie that makes up Creative Fabrica's universe. So in that sense, that really is passive income. Now look, it's not going to be a huge amount. I want to warn you up front. It may be 15 cents a month. It may be $3 a month. It may be $4 a month. It's not going to be massive amounts. 
but the amount will grow over time. I actually had a Creative Fabrica store for years and I uploaded a bunch of designs and then totally forgot about it. And I came back six months later and it was significantly more than what I was expecting. And when I say significantly more, it was like $14 when I took off and had some stuff going on in my life that I wasn't busy uploading all the time to Creative Fabrica. I came back and it was like 80 bucks. And I'm like, wow, not bad, right? You go from $14 to 80 bucks without really doing anything. I mean, I'm not uploading any new designs. I'm not working customer service. I'm not teaching Becky in Ohio how to download a file. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just went along with my life. I'm out there riding the bicycle outside playing in the sun and I'm making passive income. So to me, Creative Fabrica sort of bridges the gap between having your own website and selling on Etsy. Because if neither of those opportunities appeal to you, Creative Fabrica can be a great third option as well. Now I want to point out I am an affiliate for Creative Fabrica, but there's no affiliate links in this video. So I'm not trying to sell you on Creative Fabrica other than to say I think it's a great place to list your designs. Now there are some downsides to Creative Fabrica as well. And one of the downsides is that the margins are typically very low. So what that means is if you list an item, let's say you've got a bundle of 100 t-shirt designs, somebody somewhere is gonna download it, but if they're a subscriber and they download it, you're not making the same amount of money as you would if you were say selling it on your own website, possibly. So what I mean is, if you're listing the design for sale, let's say you've got 100 t-shirt designs, it's not going to be a high price. So you have to think like think this through, right? You create 100 t-shirt graphics. That's going to take you an entire weekend, maybe a couple weekends. You're going to create this huge bundle with 100 different t-shirt graphics, and then you're going to list it for like $3.99 or $9.99. Let's say that's like the highest one, right? 10 bucks. Well, you're not going to make 10 bucks if you make the sale. You're going to be getting a portion based on downloads and you're going to be getting a portion based on subscriptions. The other downside to Creative Fabrica, if you're selling on Creative Fabrica, they aren't very forthcoming with how their revenue is given to you. So for example, I cannot tell you how many products I've sold on Creative Fabrica. I know it's more than zero, but I couldn't tell you how much because there's no sales statistics specifically on Creative Fabrica. And the reason for that is there's lots of people that aren't actually buying your design. Instead, they've paid a subscription, a monthly fee, and then they're just downloading everybody's designs left and right whenever they want to use them. So it's more of a shared pool of money that comes into play for people who are interested in making passive income. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the pros and the cons of selling digital. I do want to point out as we end this thing that it, whatever platform you use, whether it's your own website, whether it's on Etsy, whether you're selling on Creative Fabrica, whether you stand out front sending up smoke signals telling people that you have digital downloads, the big thing to remember is it really comes down to three items for success. And I'll tell you what these three items are right now. This is the big secret. The first one is quality. You want to make sure that your digital designs technically are high quality. What do I mean by that? What I mean is if you're selling an SVG file, it needs to be a vector with not a ton of digital download points, what they call nodes. So when you look at a vector, vectors are typically simple files. They're simple circles, simple squares, one or two colors. They're not going to be like the Mona Lisa as a vector, right? That's way too many nodes. It could be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of nodes. And the reason people buy SVG files is to use a digital cutting machine like a Cricut machine, for example. If you Google Cricut Silhouette or Cameo Silhouette, uh, that will come up with like digital cutting file uh, machines. And so you want to have simple SVG files that are clean. Or if you're selling a PNG file, you want to make sure that background is transparent and that there's not these little specks and specks around the outside of like old public domain scans. So digitally cleaning up photographs and digitally cleaning up vectors, that's really important if you're selling. So quality is really important. The other one that's really, the other piece of the success that's really important is the quantity. You want to make sure you've actually got some uploads. I get this all the time too in the print on demand world. People say, hey, I've uploaded eight designs. It's been three days. I haven't made any sales. What's going on? And it's like, well, dude, you got to upload way more than that to get traction in your digital download business or your print on demand business. 
So if you're selling digital downloads, I would aim to have 100 listings, for example. That's a pretty good start. And when you get 100 listings, you'd want to see, are you actually making some money? And if you're not, then it really could lead to the third critical piece of success. This success factor is probably the most important, and it's niche marketing. And what I mean by niche marketing is, are you selling digital downloads that people actually want? That's it. And that's really the success factor into any business. Go to the mall today and go look at any business, a nail salon, a grocery store, the bakery, doesn't matter. Are they selling something that people actually want? And if the answer is no, then no one's going to show up to your store and no one's going to buy your digital downloads if nobody wants them. So what you want to do is take a look at two things. One, do you know what people use? And if the answer is no, then I'd encourage you to go onto a site like Etsy and type in a search term, see what comes up as the top search results, and then go down and scroll right down to the bottom of the, of the Etsy store and see people's reviews. Because if somebody's bought a digital download and they leave a positive review, that's real life evidence that a real person has bought your design. It's like, that's amazing, right? That, that store actually made a real sale to another live human being and you can read about it. Wow, I love this. I made a coffee mug with this design, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. There's evidence that somebody somewhere wants that. And that's what you're looking for. The second way you can determine if you're selling something that people want is ask yourself, are you an end user of your own products? And if the answer is no, maybe ask yourself why. See, the whole reason I got into digital downloads is because I originally started in print-on-demand, and I still am actively involved in print-on-demand quite a bit, but I use my own digital designs. I create my own stuff. So I don't really buy other people's digital downloads. Now, I may go on to create a Fabrica and download some assets like circles, squares, stars, some borders, things like that, because it's simply cheaper and easier to grab something like that and incorporate it into my print-on-demand design versus you know, spending an hour trying to create some high-end spherical print-on-demand design from scratch. So using assets is always recommended if it's, you know, from a time-saving perspective. But if you're selling a digital download, you want to make sure that you're not selling something that you yourself would never use. Now, that's not to say that you know, if you're like selling political digital downloads and you're not a political person, I don't mean that. I mean, that's fine. You can do that. But what I'm saying is if you never used a digital download, then you have to ask yourself, why? Are you selling something that maybe nobody wants? Just you want to ask yourself the question, right? Ideally, what you want to do is if you're creating lots of t-shirts and you're you know working in print on demand as a t-shirt designer, then I would recommend if you're going to get into the digital download world, start creating t-shirt designs because you're pretty good at it probably. You wouldn't want to transition over and start making coloring pages for KDP books if you're not creating KDP books. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you may want to start from a place of strength first. If you're already creating print-on-demand products, you could create digital designs that sync up with your area of strength already. Okay, I really hope you found this podcast helpful. Again, this is audio only, so hopefully by now dinner's made or you've washed the cat or you've finished your walk. And I really want to thank you for your time. I really hope you found this valuable. And if you did, feel free to leave me a comment down below. If you have an idea for a new podcast or another suggestion for another topic or something, I'd absolutely love to hear from you. It's a real joy actually reading through YouTube comments and hearing people's feedback because it gives me ideas on what I can do to help provide value for you going forward. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and hopefully there'll be many more of these in the future.